should have this diagram in your booklet talk about the anatomy of a roof right um, flat roof is flat roof rain gutters we all know what rain gutters are I want to point out to you that a hip roof a hip edge is going to be that extra slant on the roof where you have Can you guys see this diagram? Yeah. Okay. So when you have a roof with only two sides, that becomes, that is a gabled roof. So it's basically identifying the different aspects of a roof. Okay. Do anybody have any questions of anything that's being pointed out here in this, in this diagram? Gable so has two it sides. No, so look at this two roof, right? The reason why it makes it as a gable because it has a gabled opening. This edge right here is just a gabled opening. Okay, so it becomes it, it is a gabled roof. A lot of times policies are more expensive if you have a gabled roof. Reason being because the wind can come and hit this corner and push these two sides out. So your policy is more expensive. Homeowner's policy, that is. However, if you had a hip roof, meaning you had an enclosed side, well, now you have that enclosed side, a hip, which is illustrated here. You have the whole side that comes out an angle, closes that gable, now that's a hip roof. And policies are typically cheaper because this is not susceptible to the structure of the roof getting damaged because the wind will come, hit that side, float over it, and keep on going. As opposed to a gable end, it'll hit this side and, and want to push the framing of the soffit out. Okay? So this is a gable roof because it has a gabled opening. Okay? See the idea of gabled end. What you're referring to as the rake, which I hate the fact that they do this, all right? So whether it's a gable or a gambrel, this side of the roof, this edge, this roof edge, is considered an eave. Okay? This roof edge is considered a rake. Well, tell me what's the difference. Right. I mean, one is horizontal, one is vertical. All right, but they want to call that the rake to create a difference because along this side of the roof, you do not get um, a um, ice and water shield. Or in, if they don't use ice and water shield, they use a starter roll. Starter roll does not get applied on the rake side of the roof, only on the eave side of the roof. So eave is vertical. Eave is horizontal. It's vertical, diagonal, really, because it's never, yeah, it's not really vertical, but we use the word vertical for all intents and purposes, okay? So this is considered the eave, and this is considered the rake. In addition, gutters do, are not installed on the rake side of the roof, only on the eaves, okay? Only on the eaves that gutters are installed. What's the question? Oh, yeah, there's a whole lot of different types of rules. We're going to get to that. Okay, we're going to get to the different types of rules. I want to point out a couple items that I often overlook on an estimate. 
You see this area here where you have one structure built up against another structure and the roof is totally separated? Where, the, where one roof meets the structure of the home, the vertical structure of the home, that is called an abutment. Where one roof meets the structure of a home. Where it meets, there's a flashing there called L flashing. An exactimate is called L flashing. Roofers normally call that. All right, this is your add on. Okay. You get, you finna get a receipt? I see a button, but I see it pointing to somewhere else, and you were over here with the flashing. It's the same thing. Oh, okay. Run roof, meaning the other structure. Where, where it butts together. <laughs> where it butts together. Where it butts together, yeah, butt. With the, with the it's talking about flashing joint. Huh? You, there is a flashing underneath it. Oh, really? Yeah, there is a transitional flashing. Because you're going from one roof to the other. Okay? What I want to point out is that where the two structures meet, there's a flashing. That's, what, that's, that's the concept I want to point out. Is that there is a flashing where two materials meet. Oftentimes, that flashing is overlooked. That flashing in Xactimate is called L flashing because it's the shape of an L. Okay? Another word for that same flashing is roof to wall. Roof to wall flashing. Oftentimes, that is forgotten in an estimate. Where you have two roofs, where a roof meets with the wall. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so I see that. Sure. Okay, I see what you're saying. Where the roof meets, here's the roof, here's the wall of the house. Yeah. All right. Right where the roof meets, there's an L shaped flashing. Because one side goes on the wall, the other side goes on the roof. So, what do you mean is this on the estimate? Like, are you finished? Yeah, a lot of times people forget about that line item. You have to replace it. Yeah, you have to. That's correct. Chimney flashing, step flashing. Okay. Step flashing is this. That's a good question. Step flashing is another version of L flashing and roof to wall flashing. And the reason why they call it step flashing because let's say you have the roof, right? And then you have the chimney. You have the chimney here. So it's the same design as the L flashing. But it's in sections, smaller sections than your regular. L flashing, you can get them in 10 to 12 foot lengths, right? Chimney flashing comes in two foot lengths, four foot lengths. So what they would do, they will apply it here. Then they'll come here and apply it at an upper section. Then they come up a little bit higher and apply it up higher and higher. So you see the step? That's why they call it steps. That's the ugliest thing in the world, but they use it. Especially up north. I'm going to show you pictures of these flashings, okay? Um, and the abutment is the... Where two roofs meet. And the flashing is underneath. That's correct. There's flashing underneath it. That's correct. Okay? Um, we're going to talk more about fascia and, and soffits later. Okay.